A huge warm welcome to the Art Vlog with me, George Dopamine. Today I want to take you inside the new exhibition here at Tate Modern, um, which is showcasing work by the American artist Philip Guston. Guston was born in 1913 and, and grew up in Los Angeles. His parents were Jewish immigrants and it's fair to say that he went through several stages of artistic development. Um, at one stage he was well known as a um, abstract expressionist. He was friends with Jackson Pollock for example. But it was in the last period of his career that he developed this astonishing and I think it's fair to say unique artistic language. It was quite unlike anything that had been produced before in Western art. I suppose I have a question about whether this show will um, will get, manage to capture this man's vast career. It should be said that this exhibition has come from America, where it was shown with some controversy in Houston, Washington and Boston. Um, the main controversy surrounded the depiction of Ku Klux Klan figures in the uh, wake of the George Floyd murder, and indeed it was postponed a little bit for that. But um, I can't wait to see this. It's got some um, very good buzz around it already. So come and join me as we head inside and I take you around the show before sharing my reports and giving it a review. The first small room starts at the end of Guston's career. We see the artist surrounded by a crazy range of objects in legend and the room whets our appetite for the journey that we're about to embark on across an incredibly creative artist's career. The second room takes us from the end back to the beginning. Mother and Child was painted when Guston was 17. We learn that the artist changed his name from Goldstein to Guston in response to anti-Semitism. And as well as works clearly influenced by European modernism, there is an interesting display on the radical LA scene that Guston was part of. Although Guston took an interest in drawing and cartoons from his early age, his artistic education really blossomed as a muralist. He joined the block of painters under the Mexican great Siquerios, and there's some lovely footage, as you can see here, of a Mexican mural that Guston contributed to. He continued to paint murals as part of the Works Progress Administration's federal art project during the Great Depression. And the works were often realist, as was his return to the easel. This painting here shows his response to the horrific bombing at Guernica. And um, obviously it's very, very different to Picasso's masterpiece of the same subject. And I get the impression as I looked at this self-portrait and other works still influenced by, by European modernism, that this was an artist still struggling to find his voice. If this be not I, it's significant because it contains the only picture of his daughter committed to canvas. As news of the Holocaust filtered to America, Guston felt his artistic practice was, was breaking down and we see the first hints of abstraction in the exhibition in, our, in paintings like Review 1948-49. to Guston himself said, I couldn't continue the figuration. In 1948, Guston won a prestigious scholarship to study in Rome and left his young family and, and teaching jobs. Most work produced in Europe was destroyed, but rare works such as this show landscapes moving towards abstraction. And we see a beautiful range of abstract art in this room and the next room. Guston himself was tortured. He said, the forms I want to make couldn't take the shape of things and figures. I felt torn between conflicting loyalties, the loyalty to my own past and the loyalty of what you might still do. Um, these are some really important works and show him developing as he returned to New York and America into a fully fledged abstract expressionist. We reach peak abstract expressionism in Guston and he was always searching for new ways to create. For example, finding more, more larger blocks of colour that spread across the canvas. Um, uh, Guston became a very well respected um, abstract expressionist, yet for me he's very good, not quite great in this form. And I love this room because some music is playing with Morton Feldman to remind us that um, 
that Guston was in touch with not just other abstract expressionists, but artists and poets as well. And he actually designed the cover for this album. And at his peak as an abstract expressionist, he was rep selected to represent U.S. at the Venice Biennale in 1960. And in 1962, he had a, a large scale retrospective at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, full of his abstract works. If I could use one word to sum up room six, it would be crisis. As you can see, colour drains from, from his abstract works. And there was no doubt, according to the exhibition, that Guston was experiencing a crisis in his marriage uh, with McKim and also a major create, uh, creative crisis. And what you're beginning to see here is the, um, is the beginnings of his return to figurative art. And he clearly went through this major tussle by before uh, uttering the immortal words, to hell with it. I just wanted to draw solid stuff. And we begin to see recognisable images returning um, to his work in the late 1960s before this incredible seismic transformation that we're about to see occurs. Room 7 is a corridor with only two works in it and this rather wonderful quote. But it talks about um, how uh, Guston related to the world around him. And we begin to walk down this dark corridor into a world which you're about to see explode into his mature, in my opinion, artistic voice. We also see the troubling emergence of groups in white hoods referring back to the Ku Klux Klan who dominated and haunted Los Angeles as he grew up. You come out of this dark corridor into an artistic world transformed. Gusson himself held an exhibition of his new works at the Marlborough Gallery in New York, a commercial gallery. And it's fair to say he's both startled critics and friends alike. These paintings were dismissed as crude and backwards. Um, and it's really hard to pin them down. They're just so uniquely Guston. They're clearly not pop art. They're influenced by the cartoons of his youth, yes, but there's so much more. These paintings are also some of his most controversial because they contain the hoods imagery um, of figures of the Ku Klux Klan. And um, Guston was traumatised by the growth in the presence of the Ku Klux Klan in Los Angeles when he was growing up. And he's clearly both ridiculing these hooded figures here. They're diminished. They're not powerful at all as they go around their everyday lives in classrooms and in cars, waiting at home or painting a picture. But he's also letting us know that this evil is everywhere because he was painting this, these work, first works in the late 60s and early 70s when racism was rife, when Martin Luther King had just been assassinated and when he wanted to kind of explore the idea of evil but also develop a really strong resistance to it. So I think the trigger warning at the start of the show is valuable because it does warn that we'll be dealing with some very difficult themes, but hopefully the art itself will be reviewed as a strong form of resistance. And it was almost as if a cork had been released from a bottle in the room, um, painter's forms. Um, we, we learned that he, this became by far the most productive of his career as he reveled in this new artistic language. He was almost like a person non grata on the New York art scene. He kept very well in the background. But this language is allowed to express things he's been pining for, for his whole artistic career. Lots of the images seem dystopian when you first set eyes on them, but there are recurring motifs in all of this work at the most fruitful period of Guston's career. We see the head of McKinn, his partner and, and life partner, um, appearing as a sunset, for example. And the recurring motif of twisted legs is probably in relation to his brother who died after suffering a catastrophic car accident, um, which crushed his legs. And then he died of, of, of the consequences of, the, of, of his injuries. Guston lost his father when he was very young. And a recurring motif of some of these works is a noose. Unfortunately, Guston's father killed himself and it was Guston that found the body. And this painting, The Black Sea, 
which is coming up now is one of my favorites and it may well refer back to the Black Sea area of Ukraine where his parents emigrated from to escape anti-Semitism. There are some charming works which gives a hint to the domesticity of Guston and his wife Musa McKim. She was a poet, he was an artist and we see how they collaborated informally in some works often referring back to the domestic. The final room is simply stunning. Um, Night Studio involves works produced towards the end of Guston's career. He died in, uh, of a heart attack in 1980, age just 66. But these works um, look at the worry of um, ageing. Uh, Musa McKim had a stroke in 1977 and the, the shadow of death is, is, is both in the imagery and the rich blacks behind as well. Some paintings almost veer back to abstraction but they're very much not and they're very much in his new artistic language and this one sleeping for example is really hard at first to make out and um, what is exactly going on i found myself looking at it for ages um some of the works here are in domestic and incredibly tender as it, as this one is which is just coming up now um, of of the artist and his wife as vulnerable and elderly um, three years before Guston's death. It's a really fitting end to a show which I hope you've enjoyed, a powerful show. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that um, look there inside the Philip Guston show. On the art vlog, I'm all about reviewing the quality of the show as well as the art. And I thoroughly enjoyed this exhibition. I thought it was almost pitch perfect, and I say almost, because there was a couple of big paintings at the end which were missing, which would have made the retrospective complete. But generally, this was about as good an overview of Guston's career as you could imagine. Um, he is a heroic artist, isn't he? Um, and I always call that middle section of the Tate Galleries where the show was being um, put on as a corridor of transition and the Tate often use it to show an artistic transition. But I've very rarely seen such a dramatic transition as the move from abstraction to his heroic later period. Now, I am still undecided whether I like the works at that later period fully i think they're really interesting works what do you think please post in the comments um i love to hear from you and always respond um but there were so many great um, examples of this period and isn't it fantastic that an artist after years of struggle experimentation the exhibition makes very clear um sort of jerking from one form to another finally found the artistic voice which allowed them to um, explore all of the themes they've been longing to for their whole lives guston's dad killed himself tragically when guston was 10 and um he found the body and he never really recovered from that but you see a recurring motif of a noose in these later works painted in the last um 10 12 years of his career and um, obviously the holocaust haunted him as a jewish artist and he never felt fully able to express that until this latter part of his career and obviously there's been a, some controversy i think it's overblown around the kkk um paintings you to be quite honest have to be an imbecile Seal to, sh to in any way believe that they were glorifying the KKK. They're clearly both deeply troubled um, by the presence of the KKK, but also mocking the KKK as these triangular figures. I don't know if you ever played Pac-Man, but they look a bit like the ghosts in Pac-Man. They're dehumanized, quite rightly. So I would give this show, actually, as an exhibition, a 9 out of 10. I thought he was a good abstract artist, but then he becomes a great later on. Although whether I like that, I can recognise it, whether I like that aesthetically or not. Um, I'm still sitting on the fence and I'll go to bed tonight, no doubt, with lots of Guston's work in my mind. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the art vlog, hit that notification bell for upcoming reviews of loads more shows from London and South East and beyond. And most importantly of all, get out there and explore this incredibly rich UK art scene.